you know, when I think about the new year, I think about starting fresh. You know, it's the new year, we're going to take this uh, year by storm, and we're kind of starting over. You know what, then I start thinking about it, I'm like, wait a minute, we're not starting fresh. We're building upon all the awesome work that we finished in 2014. What a great feeling that is. And we're going to talk today about great work that we did in 2014 and what's coming up in 2015. So welcome to our first ever evening town hall. And I want to thank you guys for your willingness to stay late for many of you. And uh, for the first time, many of you from our evening and night shift are coming in early. I really appreciate your commitment and uh, willingness to uh, come here tonight. And I think uh, you're in for a real treat. I think we're going to have a good time. That's great. I'd also like to welcome all of our new colleagues. We've, uh, since our last town hall, we've had 21 new people uh, join our team here in uh, KL. So let's give them a big round of applause. Welcome, Dave. Welcome. All right, we'll take a look at the agenda. Um, the uh, purpose of this town hall is gonna be a two-way dialogue. So what you see at the top of the agenda there is, I'm gonna give a regional update, Mark will uh, give a global update for us, uh, Clayton will chat about the results of the 90-day plan, uh, then Mark's gonna chat about what's coming up in 2015. We're gonna look forward in that part of the presentation. Uh, and then the Q&A, that's the part where we wanna hear from you and we're gonna uh, just share some two-way dialogue and then I'll close this out. And we will finish promptly uh, by eight o'clock or prior so that uh, our colleagues that need to go for prayer uh, can do so. And uh, we'll get the logistics for that uh, before we close out. So we definitely will be done uh, by eight o'clock this evening. Okay, let's chat a bit about how you helped your colleagues in 2014. What do we do? What is our job all about? You know, we come to work, we work for each other, we work for our families, we work to make money. But what are our jobs really mean? So I'm going to share a few statistics with you and what that really means to AIG. This is how you helped your colleagues in 2014. We had 293,000 calls come into our service desk. 293,000. Every day, every day, that's 800 conversations with our colleagues, helping them get their jobs done. That's an amazing feat in a single year. We worked on and resolved 195 severity one incidents. What does that really mean? That means that 195 times we dove in, we helped, we resolved and fixed a crisis that was impacting our company. 337,000 requests, that's a mind-boggling number. But 337,000 times, uh, what we did to our colleagues, our colleagues said to us, help me do my job better. And we said, yes, we're gonna help you that many times. 421,000 incidents. That's when our colleagues say, I can't do my job, I've got a problem. This team, help them get their jobs done and get back to work. We moved 8,500 mailboxes to Exchange 2010. What that means, we now have 8,500 colleagues in the APAC region that now have mailboxes that are six times the size and much more resilient so that their mailboxes aren't going down when they have infrastructure issues. We migrated 7,000 people to Link so that now they have a tool that they can rapidly chat with each other. 11,000 people moved to Win7. So we got people, got our colleagues, onto recent technology and higher performing systems. That's a lot of help that we did for this organization. So I want to thank you for the work you did in 2014. This is just a small reflection. There's a lot more that we did. And for time, I'm not going to uh, go deeper. But I want to thank you for your work. I want to commend you for it. I want all of us to think about that the work we do every day helps our colleagues, helps AIG do business. And in turn, we have 88 million customers, 88 million customers around the globe that rely on AIG to make good on our promises. 
The work you do results in us helping those people. Give yourselves a round of applause. Well done. Well, soon after I started a few months ago, one of the first things I realized is that this group of people cares. You care about the work you do. You care about the people that you work with. You care about doing a good job. And you care about others. For the flood relief efforts, you were uh, the first AIG organization in Malaysia to reach out and help those in desperate need. As I'm confident everyone's aware, over 200,000 people were impacted in East Malaysia by the flooding. And uh, just severe devastation there. And what you did is just amazing. You rapidly organized, put together an effort, and reached out to help them. Uh, we raised, and you donated, over 4,300 ringgit to help them. Uh, we pulled uh, another 3,000 ringgit from the charity pool, money that you had previously donated. And those funds were used to purchase uh, needed supplies, including drinking water, canned food, medical supplies, toiletries, stoves, and a generator. And then on top of that, not only did you uh, get all of that together, the volunteers drove over 10 hours to one of the badly affected areas to de deliver those supplies. So I, I'm thankful to be part of a team that cares that much and that's willing to help those in need. So uh, if, uh, if you were part of that effort, uh, would you mind standing up so we can give you a round of applause if you uh, donated or were part of that volunteer effort? Please stand up. It's okay. Stand up. Stand up. No, nobody wants to stand up. There, there we go. Come on, stand up, guys. You are part of that effort. Thank you. I'd like to go ahead and uh, turn this over now to uh, our AIGGS president uh, and leader. And uh, he's traveled a long way to be here. And our, our visitors are hitting a bit of a lull after three days in jet lag. But uh, Mark's energy up, is up, and I know he's excited to be here. So please welcome Mark Dominic. Thank you. Um, I, you know, it's, it's kind of, it's a bit overwhelming uh, for me to be here. Uh, you know, I've been here uh, now close to four years with AIG, and uh, I remember when. And uh, who was here when we were in the other building? Raise your hand. Is this outstanding? I, I remember going to, going to the other building, and that building was one floor, we were tight, and you know how we did a town hall? We stood in the middle of the, the, the center, and everybody stood up and gathered around, and we talked to everyone. And I think we were about 140 or so FTE, uh, 140 people strong, 140 people. So within less than four years, we're here. And you guys should be really proud about that and be part of that, especially the old timers that got to see that transformation. Now, saying that, obviously we've stormed and now we're forming and we need to build the kind of relationships that great organizations have and people have. And, uh, and I think you've got a great opportunity here to really create a future that, uh, that others haven't seen or done before. So, uh, so I would uh, kind of put a backdrop on this whole presentation or conversation to say it's time to seize that future. So um, I also have to do my own slides, which is unusual. But uh, So what I want to talk about is just kind of what, what are we focused on? And uh, you know, these were the three things, three items we put out to our organization and we've talked about for 2014. Now I'll tell you, I, uh, I think, you know, we met them. But uh, compared to the previous couple of years where we did uh, some really uh, tremendous things, and some of you were part of you know, moving data centers and moving servers, um, we worked hard, but we didn't fulfill all the things we wanted to fulfill for the first 250 days. But I'll tell you, the last 90 were outstanding. And I told you the leadership team, uh, was that yesterday? I was trying to days. Yesterday, that it was outstanding. And the vibe 
you know, I, I used to, uh, when I would come out here, when we first started and built the organization of the vibe of all the new people coming in, and uh, you just feel them in the building electricity, you know, you kind of suffer in 2014 a little bit. And, uh, and when I came back this time, it's there, you know? And, uh, you know, I, I think whatever happened, whatever the trigger was, whatever you guys did together, really set the bar of what you could be and what I expect you to be. Because that was the vision that this group would be a high performing, the best in Malaysia, the best in the planet, delivering the greatest service to our clients. And, uh, and we need to make that 90 days 365 next, this year, this year, 2016. And if we do that, the impact we'll have on our business will be significant. So we said there were three key things, and, and these themes and, and the how, this is really the how, what we're going to do, and we'll talk about the what later, but the how, where the end user is at the center in our heart. And it's the center of our thoughts of what we're doing and how it impacts individuals. And uh, again, the 90 days really demonstrated how this organization, both here and in Fort Worth, coalesced around that thought. And it demonstrated to our users, our colleagues that sit out there every day that generate all the value, the revenue that can pay our salaries and give us a life and our families a life allowed them to do their job really well. And uh, again, you need, to be, you need to be proud of that stuff. Okay, you have a big impact. We have a big impact to our business, and we can never forget that. And when it's not working, it's, to be on the other end of that is really frustrating. What we have to do, though, is make sure we don't accept, even in, in our peers and the partners we work with, uh, never allow that to be lost. You know, I'm going to give you, a, uh, and we've got a lot of examples tonight we're going to share with you that are really significant about their, our ability to deliver great results for our customers and get it at the, uh, the heart of everything we do, that experience. But we have examples where that isn't happening in our groups. And sometimes, you know, we get frustrated with our community. And I'll tell you a story, and it's, a, a, it's, it's not just a story, it's a fact that mm -hmm. happened where we did have someone who worked in one of our groups down, and uh, we had a user that was having a lot of problems. And uh, unfortunately, the individual uh, really didn't think well of that user. Thought them to be probably incompetent, they didn't know what they were doing, and, uh, and put that in writing. And actually put it in an email, ended up with the, uh, ended up with the user, called the user a dingbat. Now, uh, you know, maybe that's, when you think about that, sometimes maybe we all are dingbats. But the fact is, it was a derogatory and a disrespectful way. Think about the people that are struggling out there. You cannot let that happen. You cannot allow people within our group to think that way. Because if you were ever at the other end of being called a dingbat, how would you feel? Okay? So, it wasn't anybody here in this country but it was somebody in our group, and that's our brand that's out there. So users may frustrate us, and external things may make us uh, think poorly of someone. What we need to do is step back from that, even in society, and think about what, put ourselves in their shoes and what they're doing, and what struggles they're having, so they can deliver the, what they need to deliver to the, the people around them. So I will encourage you, that is as much about the kinds of things we do. If you feel and make sure you don't tolerate people calling people dingbats or our colleagues incompetent, that we reach out and understand how to help them. That's our job. And we as a group, and we as a, a, a company that supports our company, have, has to have a DNA and a culture that to doesn't tolerate that kind of thing, okay? So uh, as we think about 2016, we're gonna lift that game and we're really gonna get focused on listening 
to our users and trying to understand the frustrations they have. And we as leadership have to give you the support to get that done. Second thing was around collaboration and about working together. And again, I, I, tale of two stories. I think we were okay in 2014 for the first part. The last 90 days, the teamwork I've seen, I saw across, around the world, you know, here in Malaysia, connecting with Fort Worth to get a whole bunch of stuff done that had an impact was just, it, it was unbelievable. And uh, you need to feel really good about that. Like I told you, leadership team yesterday, what a great way to start 2016. You got the wind at your back and, uh, and the future, you can accomplish anything. And you should, you should, you're that good. You should. In 90 days, you did more than we did in the whole 250 days. You had more of an impact in the business than we did probably for the rest. Of not to say we didn't do a lot of work previously, but but it's not just about the work. It's about the energy you created uh, for the firm. So again, you, you guys really need to reflect on that as teams because if you can keep that feeling. You keep that mo I called it mojo the other day. You keep that mojo, you will be seen as the best of the best. Mm -hmm. And uh, the third thing is really developing the best. And that's about, uh, you know, we did a lot of legwork this year on developing and putting in place the training and curriculums that we're going to need. I know 2015, uh, those investments should start bearing fruit. So we're starting a, uh, a technical program for universities, a student's going to start in the U.S. and then by the end of the year my goal is to have to bring it to uh, Malaysia and work with the universities here and uh, to start really bringing university students into our ranks and to our company. So, uh, so more to come on that for the year. It's really exciting. It's a three-year mentoring program to actually develop what I would say the next is the next generation into uh, GS and really create a sustainable model going forward. And we will ask you in this room to mentor those individuals. You know, young, impressionable, first job. It's a big deal. If some of you can reflect on where, when you started. When I started, it's scary coming out of school and changing and getting into something. Sometimes you think you know it and you really don't. And it does take someone to help you. And someone helped me along. And I'll expect this group to help them along. So a lot more work. We did a lot. This year with the leaders, leading others, I think was uh, the group here went through. We did a number of assessments for uh, within the leadership teams and then all the way down. So really trying to progress some of the development aspects that we, we as a team need to do. We need to do a much better job next year, or this year, and, uh, and we will. So um, again, more to come on those things. A lot more, I think Mike, uh, Mike will talk about training later on, but uh, but we got to lift our game in, in training and development skills and make all of us more valuable. You'll hear a kind of a theme through the year that we've got to get out of the level one task and get everyone up to level two and level three. And, you know, the intent of that is to make us all more valuable, both personally and professionally, but also have a greater impact to the firm. Okay. Um, talk about uh, a little bit of the what for 2015. So. Um, Look, about, uh, let's say about uh, three years ago, I pulled the leadership uh, out and we went off site and said, we need to develop a strategic plan. And that strategic plan was put together uh, around these imperatives that you see uh, all the way to my right, okay? And uh, so there, we had a strategic plan and framework. The problem, like everything, is, you know, leaders, senior leaders put it together and it never really represented our body of people. And so we're trying a few things that are different this year. We, uh, we put a framework together, but we actually at least started Fort Worth right now, pulled employees out to start working and helping us really define our future. We will be reaching out and starting to include now uh, uh, you all in that process to fine tune the thoughts and really create, like I said, our diagram for the future and really what are the things we are going to do and make sure we understand those things as we look to 2015. Uh, but as you can tell, you know, it was around uh, 
efficient operations, it was around thought leadership and alignment, and we, we have to start thinking about our work in terms of those imperatives, because everything we do should line up to those things to get us to the end state, and we've got to be good at connecting those for you and you helping us make sense of what should be in there to connect to those imperatives. So we think about this, um, you know, and I, I won't take much longer. There's some work that's going to be done with the organization. I know there was a couple questions that came to us before, and we'll deal with them in the panel about the organization and potential changes. And I'll say there's probably going to be two change, two kind of, uh, if I was to think about a high level, two thematic changes that are going to happen. One, there will be some organizational changes because our customers or our colleagues are changing. Okay, so if you think about, we're not, we don't property casually anymore, we have consumer and commercial. So we've got to line up to those client bases. For our delivery organizations, which you're part of, there won't be much change um, because we've been constructed in a way that allows our, our colleagues and our clients, the people we have to interface with, change without changing our fundamental structure. Saying that, though, there's work we have to do. We have not been good at defining the work we're going to do in various settings. Okay? So you understand what you're supposed to do, and you understand the kind of work that you're going to uh, connect with to, uh, to others. So in Fort Worth, you know, we were having a conversation had, uh, with Dell today, and we were talking about when Dell created the, uh, the facility I have over here, and just how there was a lot of knowledge people from the states would fly in, and you get to know them, but that was the only connection that, was, that we had. And so when they weren't there anymore, no one knew who to call, what to do, and we don't want that to happen. We want a real integration with the U your U.S. counterparts, and so each, not only do you know each other here, but you know them also and can work together. And you know what work's got to go in what spots. So there's no confusion about that. And you can help each other. So a lot more work in that area. We've got, um, there, you know, we talk about cloud, talk about cloud. There is work going on uh, around cloud enablement. And I, and I hate using the word cloud. What I want to use is automation. Okay, so if we're ever going to move to a level two organization and have you all lift up and do higher value tasks and learn a lot more skills, we're going to have to automate some of the things we ask you to do today. And so this is all about how do we get better and direct ourselves to the future and automate. So there's some proof of concepts that we're setting up and uh, that have cloud-like capabilities. We're working with our suppliers uh, and my, my aspiration for next year is that by the end of the year, we will, those will be fully function, functional prototypes that can migrate next into production. Um, and we'll, we'll have more information on those too. Um, we talked a little about the te Technology Career Acceleration Program. That's about university students coming in. Again, we got to have a culture of skill development. You've got to be curious because it's going to help not just us as a firm, but you as individuals. I want you to have more skills. I want you to have more of an impact on AIG. And you have the capability to do that. We as the leadership team have to give you space and time and help you. You've got to help us to think about what you really want to do as you move forward, okay? But again, more to come on this program. It's about bringing in the university students now and starting to really grow our ranks. Um, the efficient operations, I'm gonna leave to uh, Mr. Ellis to get up here, but a lot of that's talking about some of the key projects we've gotta kick off as we continue to really bed down what I would say standard operations. It is important that we don't lose momentum that you've gained here in the last 90 days, but it's gotten us just to that level that we need to be to deliver day-to-day -day operations, okay? So it is important that we focus on these, these pro and there'll be projects associated with these that we'll be working on, but uh, that, that is, uh, that is uh, we don't go back, I 
guess is the, what I want to leave you with, and I told this to your leadership, we can never go back to the, what it was prior to the 90 days. And again, not that it was horrible, but it was okay. And we're not okay. We are not an okay group. We are the best of the best. Okay? We are the best of the best, and you've got to think that way, and you've got to want to be that way. Because if you don't, we're going we're gonna to move on. Okay? But that energy that you have has got to stay in place. It's huge. It's huge. And it's a huge testament to your skills and ability. So, like Phil Fasano, who's our new CIO, you heard him, took over uh, Robert Dickey's position. Um, it was a little bit different before. Uh, Phil reports to our CEO, Peter Hancock, and, uh, and this, he just made an announcement, this is the organization that was announced. So what Phil did is really try to align to what's called the OPCO, the Operational Committee, which is Peter Hancock and his direct reports. And uh, if you've watched any of the information flowing, Peter now has reporting to him the regions directly and also the heads of consumer and commercial. And then obviously the support groups, including the CIO. Now, one of the big notes here, just so you know, and it's different than Robert, the CIO actually reports to the CEO. Uh, prior to this, the, the CIO, or head of operations and systems, actually reported to the CAO, which is one layer down. And the intent, Peter's intent, is that technology will change the future, and it's critical to our success. Phil Fasano comes in, was the ex-CIO of Kaiser Piemonte, and a big advocate of technology changing the game. And uh, I think mean, there was a question on the book he wrote. Um, he did write a book uh, about healthcare transformation, very focused on uh, mobile everywhere. Uh, he just kind of give you a view of him, because you'll see him next week. No, he doesn't have a laptop. He came in, he, he has an iPad mini, and an iPhone. That's all he needs to function. So if you think about it, that's how he thinks. Everything we do has to enable those kind of environments, and that will put pressure on us as we think about that next generation. But it's exciting too, right? It's how do we enable this company to be agile, uh, deal with big data, and mobility. And he's got experience and a track record. That's pretty exciting. So I think you'll enjoy his uh, his, uh, his uh, I wouldn't call it a presentation, but his, his talk. And uh, I would encourage you to probe him on uh, his thoughts about not just where you know, AIG is going, but where he thinks technology is going. Okay, uh, big note on that list, a couple things that I would say understand. One is uh, there's open positions in the uh, consumer. But he's also consolidating what I would call standard operations, which we're part of under a new role, uh, which is a CTO role. Again, that's to get end-to-end uh, -end strategy and operations together. So uh, more to come. This is just one level. There's a lot more work underneath that level that's going to happen. And uh, again, if you have questions, I'll answer them to the best of my ability uh, after uh, at Q and A. Okay, so with that, uh, without uh, further ado, I, I did want to say something. You know, look, Mike's been here, you know, he keeps saying, every time there's a problem, well, I just got here. Well, <laughs> he's been here now for uh, six or seven months, and I think, uh, I think, you know, obviously I'm pretty excited. I think it's a great addition, uh, but uh, he is, uh, he's from Texas, so you gotta give him a break. Okay, so <laughs> with that, I'm going to turn over to Clayton, and uh, thank you. Well, uh, good evening, everyone. So uh, pleased to be here again. Uh, I was here a few months back, and we talked about the survey, and, and I guess a couple of data points. So Mark talked about the kind of job we were doing before in Scholar, and it was good, not horrible. It was horrible in some places like the material. And uh, that's not good. Uh, it, it's not good, it's not good for the company, not good for us. Uh, so the good news is we've moved on. 
If we can go back, we see to slide eight. There's something I just want to show everyone. Okay, so so that you understand that we are not disconnected in terms of how we think about how we move this organisation forward. Under the service excellence and efficient operation components, look at the elements that we have there. Okay? There is a linkage to that, to what we've been doing with the 90 day plan, and what our plans are for 2015. Uh, so, look at them, understand them, remember them, and think about those things as we move through this, uh, through this conversation, because it's important. We put quite a lot of thought into the plan of attack. So it is not by accident that things appear here. This, we, we have a planned strategy for this group, and we're going to execute to that strategy. So if we can roll forward and we'll release some things. Okay, so coming back to the horrible piece, uh, we, we conducted the survey, and I took you all through this. We had, uh, we went out to, to uh, five countries, uh, and we surveyed about 40,000 people, and we got 13,500 responses back. And with that, we also got 10,500 written responses, where people took the time to tell us how we could do our job better. So they, they gave us some rankings, and uh, in some cases it was okay, and in other cases it, it was horrible. Uh, and with that feedback, they took the time to tell us how we could do it better. Okay, so that was really important because rather than saying, you guys stink, they were saying, look, there's work you can do, and here's some suggestions on how you can do it better. Okay, so, so, so the company wants our group to do better. So we take, we take that on board, and, um, and with that, yeah, some of it was a bit of a shock in terms of the extent uh, of the underperformance that we had, and some of it was expected. We knew across the VDI environment, for example, on that legacy VDI environment, that there were challenges with it. We'd, we'd heard about remote access, we knew that we had XP computers out there, there was, there was a lot of stuff that we knew, but equally, we got slammed. We got slammed on the service desk, we got slammed on ticket management, and even though we've talked uh, a lot about quality over the course of the year, we have not been consistently delivering quality. Uh, but perhaps we, we didn't understand to the extent that we were inconsistent uh, with that service quality. And so off the back of that uh, shock, uh, you know, I, I, I put together a construct with which I thought uh, we could quickly address those performance issues, that we could rally the troops, get everyone focused, and, uh, and, and address those fundamental concerns before somebody else uh, addressed them with us. And, and that's never a good thing. So, especially when it's your boss or your boss's boss who's telling you how to run the organisation. So, Mark wasn't sure, uh, I don't think he necessarily bought in 100% of the plan, but I was absolutely confident uh, that with Things that we, you know, that we integrated into that plan, that we could deliver uh, a materially different user experience in a very short period of time. But it was going to be a concerted effort, and we and, and we had to get on with it. And we needed everybody in the group to be committed to it uh, for us to, to to realize a result. Now, my, my expectation was that we would probably get most of the way there uh, across that plan. And I knew that we had some items in the plan that would take uh, take longer than the 90 days to get done. And so we're at the 90 days, I think it's day 91, actually. And so uh, if we could go forward to the next slide. We, uh, we, us, our group, we kicked butt. We seriously, seriously got it done. It is the most tremendous turnaround I've ever seen. And I've been doing this stuff for a long time. I, I might look uh, quite a bit younger than Mark, um, <laughs> but I'm not. Uh, and, and so I've been doing this for a long time. Uh, and, and I've never seen a group rally in the way that this group did, a group in Fort Worth. And every other person, we, we, we reined in people, admins, everyone, into, into the mix. And we had everybody working on 
on the challenge, particularly around the ticket management piece. And the result has, has been amazing. The feedback uh, that we've seen across the board from, from users, uh, we're seeing some of it flow into the CSAT now. Uh, it, it's just been tremendous. And I, I was telling the group yesterday, uh, even my admin, I said, look, I'll, I'll look after myself. Can you, can you start calling people and, and helping them with their tickets? You know how to use service now. And uh, so she ended up being, uh, of, the, of the group that we reined in, she was the second top ticket closer. And she was so proud of herself. And, uh, and, and you know, the fact that she was speaking to our customers, and they were so happy to get a call from us for it to be closed out, to have somebody say, is there anything else we can do for you? Okay, and so that has really, I, I think, really driven a material uh, perspective change about this group across the board. Uh, and the reason for that is that if we, if we move on to the next slide, when you look at, when you look at some of the statistics that we're, that we're putting up here, um, so we had a, we had a backlog of about 12,000 tickets, okay? 12,000, that's a bad number. We cleared all of them. So 12,000 people who were waiting on stuff got their stuff. We had 800 plus users who were waiting on software installs. We cleared all of it. We cleared all of it. I mean, it's absolutely amazing statistic. Uh, Mark mentioned the exchange program, or uh, sorry, Mike did, and uh, so 70,000 mailboxes. We had that underway. We knew that was one of the issues that you know, came up in the survey and that was, that was expected, and we had a plan to address it. We completed 70,000 mailbox migrations, gave everyone a, a, a larger mailbox uh, to allow them to better do their job, and we got that done. Uh, we continued to roll. Uh, tech bars and we're at eight now, fantastic feedback on the tech bars, so that is where we've occupied a space, we've set up uh, a capability and, and, and users can come into the tech bar and get some help with their technology issues. CSAT really strong on that, so 4.8, uh, it's, a, it's a tremendous result and, uh, and, and very, very pleasing. We've got eight now and I think another three coming in the next uh, 30 days? Yeah. Yeah, so fantastic stuff. Um, we, we sort of re-engineered field services, particularly in the US where we were getting some, some mediocre results. And uh, we, you know, we, we worked with Dell, our partner, and fundamentally changed the capability. And the other thing that we did is uh, we, we got Dell to develop a little application so that when the field services agent goes to the desk and they perform the function that they've been asked to perform, they were able to just hand their, their uh, phone over or uh, their iPad or whatever the device they're using and have the user complete the survey then and there. And uh, we, we're getting tremendous results. A uh, uh, customer satisfaction of 4.79. That's high for field services. It's, it's a really, really good number. It took a little dip. There's a little bit of story to it because we went to Dell and said develop the app and uh, they did that for us. And uh, the way they configured it, you know when you do those online surveys, uh, you know, very dissatisfied, satisfied, very satisfied. They they got it back to front, and so people were clicking on extremely dissatisfied, uh, but then in the comments saying they were completely satisfied with it. Uh, so we had a bit of a dip in CSAT, but they they corrected their app, and now everyone's everyone's good. So that's flowing through and producing a really really strong result for us. Uh, we've introduced a, a technology day. So for sites, we are, we, it's dispatch only. So I've got something broken, put a call into the desk. We send uh, field services out, a guy out who will fix it. Uh, so what we decided, and, and Mark's idea, was that why don't we put a, a guy out there for a day who can just do anything, anything anyone needs. So this is for sites that have 20, 30 people um, or more. But they don't have it. They don't have field services resident inside their, their organisation um, on a permanent basis. And so we've started to roll that out. Really positive feedback. So that guy, he's there. He's walking the floor. He's talking to people. What are your issues? You know, if you've got configuration issues with your laptop, computer, I, I can help you fix that. I can raise a ticket on your behalf. Similar to what we do inside the tech bar. And these guys go through the same training as the tech bar. So again. Um, 
13 of them were completed last year, we'll, we'll do those 30 sites. And I think already we're getting feedback from where other sites have heard about this uh, offering, saying, hey, well, why don't you give that to us as well, we'd really like it. Uh, we've got the service desk now hitting the SR, it's, it's SOAs across the board. And, you know, when we talk about, uh, you know, not our finest moment, we didn't hit our SOAs all year in the service desk uh, internationally. So, uh, there's, there's a direct correlation to our performance here and, and the worldwide performance. This year we're going to hit them, okay? We're going to hit them. Uh, we're geared up for it, we're going to continue to work on it, uh, but January is the first month and uh, we're lining that up, so that's coming together. Uh, we did get a lot of feedback about the server build process, the server go live process. We had thousands of servers that were in the server build process that we weren't achieving uh, our committed SLA on. Uh, one mark developed for us also, um, five days, and uh, and so we sold for that. There was a lot of work went into that, and uh, you know, to, to give you some history to that, when I first came here uh, three and a half years ago, and we did a customer survey, the feedback about our server build capability was terrible then. So, uh, and we were taking about sixteen, almost to infinity, but sixteen to twenty weeks to build a server. Today we can build all of, you know, 250 servers a week essentially in less than five days SLA. Wintel servers we're now building uh, in two days and I think by the end of this month that will be two hours. Okay, so fantastic, that's fixed. We won't get any more complaints uh, about that. Uh, and we also introduced a capability around the go-live process. So we've been taking all of our servers, uh, building them, handing them out, and no one was really owning the go-live process, and it's not necessarily just a GS function, it's a, it's a company function. The business unit has a responsibility, or the applications group, GS has a responsibility, and security have a, a responsibility to take the server through all the processes to allow us to put it into, the, into, into production. And uh, we've taken over 1,100 servers through that process in the last uh, 90 days. Um, we are down to 187 in the queue now, and of that 187, I want to say 72% of that now sit with the business units themselves. So, an amazing turnaround. And again, I kind of can get a sense of what the company feels about us by these, the types of escalations that come to me, and I was getting a lot around that stuff, so that's, um, that's fantastic. Uh, we talked a lot about building out a capability to allow us to better monitor um, and manage critical applications that we were running and uh, with that we bought a tool, a, a, a feature to a tool that we already had, uh, CA NIMSOFT, and we've been working diligently to, to building out a capability to allow us to monitor those critical 276 critical applications that we run, that, that effectively run the company. And so the foundational launch of that monitoring capability uh, went in uh, before the end of the year, so we're really pleased with that milestone. Um, we, la we launched the, the Earwatch uh, mobile offering, so some of you will be familiar with Good. Earwatch is, uh, again, on Mark's recommendation, a far superior product. That will get proven out over time. Um, and, and we'll see if Mark was right more it was. Uh, anyway, more to come on that. Uh, We'd also been working on a, on a piece of work for uh, the migration of uh, our BlackBerry users away from the BlackBerry product, and you know what's going on with BlackBerry, and in fact, I think rumours out today that they, they're going to be acquired by uh, another party, um, and so that represents some risk for our operation, and so uh, we've been trying to spin up a capability to replace 5,000 uh, Blackberries with iPhones, and uh, so we launched that now as well, and uh, uh, the stat that we probably got here is a little old, but within the first few days of the, of the year, uh, over 650 devices have been swapped out, so we're fantastic with that. Uh, we committed to ourselves to get all of our Windows 7 migrations completed, and we, we knocked that one over as well. Uh, and the most staggering statistic that we've got here uh, tonight is that when we started the 90-day program, we were at 53% breach of SLA on our tickets. It is a bad number. And so our target was to get to 5% by the end of the 90 day program. And at the end of the day, we got to 5%. So 
Just yesterday we got to 5%. That is so awesome. Can you imagine the difference that makes? So why put all those stats up about the things you guys did over 2014, all of those volumes? Well, in the last 90 days, you did those volumes of apps like better than you've ever done them. I mean, it's tremendous. The difference this makes to people's lives. To getting stuff done, to, to be able to do the business of insurance, because we are doing the fulfillment in accordance with the commitments we made. And so we'll be knocking it over. Fantastic. <coughs> I, honestly, I, I, I thought with about 20 days to go, uh, and so I, I was kind of thinking 9%. Um, so we, we reached the 5%, so awesome, thank you. Uh, it's, uh, and, and <laughs> so look, and, and we don't need to be much better than 5%, but we'll, we'll never even be at 0% because we would be overstaffed. So we, the, 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 the SLAs contemplate a, a level of breach, but the 5% the is the maximum you can be at. Uh, and I want to call out Stan Bassett because uh, Stan, who runs our data centres uh, in the US and provides oversight to the worldwide data centres, he was the first guy to get to zero. Stan takes his work very, very seriously. And uh, they have a much smaller team. And so it's actually much harder on volumes that they get to get to zero. But, but he, was the first, he was the first group to get to zero. So uh, it, it's, it's just tremendous. I'm very proud. Um, you know, we did some other stuff. Uh, the catalogue, we got feedback. We've done some material improvements around that. People said your catalogue stinks, it's too hard to figure out, and, and it's absolutely right. Uh, now, there's, there's aspects of the catalogue that are ours, and there's aspects that you know, our other colleagues in, in, in technology own, and we've got some work to do there. But we've started to clean up ours. But a, but a, a new front end is coming in on that, and that's uh, due to be released in January, so that will make a material difference. Uh, managed print was another area. So in the US, we rolled out a managed print service, and this is, you know, this is sort of typical of what we've done historically as, as GS. We we had a project, and so we were head down, and we rolled it out. Okay, so we went to all these sites, and we took away the uh, personal printers, and we gave them uh, multifunction devices, and then we said. Our job is done, and we hit it off, and uh, and we didn't productionise it properly. Uh, we had a third party, who, uh, Hewlett Packard, who were, were, were providing us with support, and so you know, as as, as time passes, the, the service deteriorated, and we weren't managing Hewlett Packard properly, and they weren't doing the job properly, and end users were really miffed about the quality of service that they were getting from us, and so 367 printers had to be replaced. Out of, I want to say, 1,200, uh, 1,200, prints. It's a bad number, okay? And so uh, we were able to address that. We've now fully productionised that. It's fully baked. That will never happen again. But it does, it does speak to what we as a group need to do better. And that is we must operationalise every single thing that we do, okay? Everything has to be fit for run. We've got to get to this mindset where every year we are going to upgrade, replace 33% of the technology estate that we run. Okay? So we're going to be in a continuous cycle of refresh and upgrade. And you need to understand that that's going to be our life. So while we're messing around, managing tickets poorly, we're not doing the job that we're supposed to be doing that will ultimately make us a great organisation. And so we do have to lift, we do have to drive automation across the board uh, so that we're not spending our time handling the 220,000 touch points that we have per month on level one tasks. Okay, we've got to eliminate that so that we can refresh 33% of the fleet year on year so that we can do the more interesting work, so we can upgrade the software that we run for the company. Okay, the software that we run for ourselves, we've got to be able to be in that place. Okay, and so it's a fundamental shift. And guess what, it allows you to do more exciting work. Okay, it is, it is much more fun to be doing that kind of stuff 
than it is to be down in the bowels of the organisation handling level one tickets. So when we talk about automation, when we talk about driving those levels of improvements in our, in our organisation, don't be frightened by it. You should welcome it. We want to exterminate level one activity so that we can do the level two stuff. So that I don't need to bring in 60 or 70 or 80 people from Dell to do our, our server 2012 upgrade. That we're doing it with our own people. And that we're upskilling and adding value back to the organisation. Okay? So a really important point. So again, I want to finish with a thank you. And, uh, and it truly is a tremendous effort that you've all achieved. Uh, and that we've achieved as a group company-wide. And the benefit of that is going to be felt uh, across the world. So uh, you must give yourselves a round of applause. <laughs> All right, um, I'm going to invite the mic back up on the stage. <laughs> Hello. Okay. Okay, thank you, Clayton. Um, yeah, exciting. Exciting stuff, the 90 day plan. Well, uh, we want to do, uh, we want to recognize some significant uh, contributors uh, to that program. So everybody here today has had an impact, there's no question, and the stories uh, that I heard and the work that I saw, I, it was just awesome over the last 90 days, and I, uh, I, it's a little hard to sing out just a few, we will, but all of you uh, deserve the recognition. But we, we had a few folks that uh, made significant extra uh, contribution uh, that we want to uh, recognize today. And uh, these individuals had the end user at the heart of everything we did and demonstrated how, how we work as one team, the connectedness, the uh, working together, and uh, each of them sacrificed personal time, family time, uh, to do extra to make this program happen. And so uh, we're going to recognize these folks. The uh, cup that you see up there from Royal Selangor, uh, we're going to present them uh, with this uh, cup uh, that they can probably display in their home or in their office. Uh, so it's a Royal Selangor pewter tumbler, and the knot uh, that you see surrounding uh, the cup at the bottom there, it's inspired by Japanese knot work, and it's an a symbol of affection, of warmth, and I think most importantly, togetherness because that's how we work here is together. And it's a reminder how we work together over the last 90 days. So um, I'd like to invite the following people up on stage now. Let's give them a big round of applause. They are Raymond Simon, Dwayne Jennings, Fareed Nasri Abdul, Amy Chris, and Samara Come on, there's Fareed, I see one. Come on, come on. Okay, there they are. Come on, guys. Raj, Nasri. Yeah, come up. So as they're coming up, thank you. Uh, as they're coming up, let, let me uh, uh, just talk a little bit about them. So I'm going to start with uh, Raymond. This is the lion's share of what we were doing. And I remember sitting down with Raymond and uh, saying, okay, Raymond. Uh, matter of fact, you talked with Clayton after the last town hall. And Clayton said, and Raymond had some ideas, and Clayton said, I need you to lead the SLA improvement. So the next day, Raymond's sitting in my office, and he's like, I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready to take this thing on. He said, what am I going to do with my current job? I said, congratulations, you get two jobs. <laughs> so, uh, so Raymond kept his duties, and he had some help with that, but he kept his duties, and he took on the SLA program. Uh, many of you interacted with Raymond throughout the program. And not only did uh, he get us going, the metrics, the training, the tracking, all of that stuff, but he also came up, he was the uh, engineer behind the idea of not only are we going to do our SLAs, we've got to do them with quality. And so he came up with a quality tracking program as well, which was then taken and uh, started right here in Malaysia and is now rolled out globally for uh, AIGGS. So, uh, Raymond, congratulations, outstanding job. Let's give a round of applause. So, did Dwayne make it? Dwayne? No, I, I think uh, uh, I, I was texting with him a little bit earlier. I don't think he was able to be here tonight. So, I'm just, uh, Dwayne Jennings, uh, as I mentioned earlier, he's from the U.S. He was up here, I'm trying to think of the number of weeks, but uh, it was pushing a couple of months over the last three months 
spending with us here in KL uh, to uh, cover our management gap on the service desk. He's worked with our team leads uh, uh, to make a lot of changes and improvements and to do uh, the connectedness and bring us together with our Fort Worth counterparts. So I'm really appreciative with Dwayne. Uh, he, he would tell me, he, we'd uh, be chatting, he's like, Mike, whatever you need me to do, I was like, Dwayne, can you stay another week? Mike, whatever you need me to do, every time. And he stayed here uh, and was just made a real big impact on operation. Let's give Dwayne a big, big round of applause. <laughs> so uh, next, if Fareed, Nasri, and Tarou, the three of you would uh, come over. Fareed, Nasri, and Tarou, come on over. So, uh, yes, so it's good. So, uh, uh, it's, uh, uh, let's see, Fareed, and Nasri, and Tarou, who's the one? Oh, he's got a sub one. He can use himself to get sub one. <laughs> so uh, he's doing the good work. So for Ian and Nasri here, well, these three groups, storage, web services, and Unix, uh, were our top three groups performing. And they're representing their teams here. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and that's representing the leader of the job, so we're, we're recognizing those three teams uh, for truly outstanding work. So uh, the top three groups, and that's, by the way, top three, not just SLA attainment, but with quality, which uh, when, when I was looking at the metrics every week, these three teams were exceeding every time. Awesome. So a uh, true storage team, uh, true so we're working on the set one, uh, had a 40% improvement on his request SLA fulfillment. So, and that, that happened shortly after we started the program. He dug in with his team. Uh, freed, in addition to your role with web services, uh, just a few weeks ago, uh, uh, and Web Services is always nailing it and doing great on SLAs, we asked Fareed to also take on our Citrix team, and he's already started applying some of the great uh, work that he's done on the Web Services team. So he got two jobs as well, so I uh, appreciate that, Fareed. And then uh, finally, Nasri uh, managed to reduce our ticket polluters from over 1,000 tickets to less than 200. So in addition to the awesome work, he also reduced his volumes. Gentlemen, great work. Congratulations. Okay, uh, Kumara and Rajdi, uh, if, if you'll come over. I'm sorry. It's not here. Okay, no worries. So uh, they, they started uh, on the service desk and went with Dwayne here. Uh, he came to you guys and said, if you start managing our, our uh, uh, shifts during the uh, day and the weekend shifts, and make sure we hit our SLAs. And what Dwayne was telling me is that every single day he would come in and these guys would turn over and there wouldn't be a single red SLA on what they were turning over. So when, when they started managing it, it transformed and those teams, their performance went way up. Outstanding job, thank you. <laughs> okay, and finally, Andy and Chris, if, if you guys will come over. So, uh, from our service management team. So, uh, Annie uh, assisted in rolling out the quality ticket management training, uh, which was a, a huge effort. I know many of you uh, were uh, part of that, but Annie uh, was a huge part of getting the quality program rolled out, which is now done global. Uh, and she came in after business hours almost every single day to uh, deliver and coordinate that quality program and uh, make sure we got that done. Fantastic work, Annie. So thank you. Very much. And finally, Chris, Mr. Chris. So Chris uh, stepped up uh, to assist Raymond uh, when I, I, Raymond had two hats on, was doing two jobs. Uh, Chris took on additional work to, uh, in addition to his uh, uh, regular uh, role, to run the service management team and provided uh, a lot of the back office support and driving the metrics and really making uh, the coordination across the 90-day uh, program. In addition, not only did he do all of that, but he's the proud new father of twin babies. So, <laughs> so he's had many sleepless nights and lots of them more last week, I believe. Yeah, so, so he's very tired. He actually is coming off his paternity leave to, uh, leave to join us this evening. So congratulations, Chris. Well done. Great job. So uh, all of these folks, they represent, and they are representative of the teams that were all here. Couldn't be prouder. Thank you and well done. Let's give them a round of applause.
Okay, so I think uh, turn back over to Mark now. Uh, yeah, or, or Clayton or Mark? Clayton, I'm sorry. All right, thank you. I believe it's Clayton. Okay, all right, so we've got a few Okay, in terms of our uh, operational uh, objectives, what comes beyond the 90 day plan, uh, it's more of the same. It's, it's more excellence, it's more great service. It's more focus and it's more native. Okay? So what, what we're going to make sure that we do, and this is how we get to the next level, we're going to, we're going to make sure that we hit all of our SLAs with quality. Okay? And no exceptions uh, for us on this. This is something that we have to do. This is what we get paid for and this is what we have to do. So, We've been good on the availability of SLAs and not so good on some of the others, so we're going to tighten all of that up, okay? Uh, the desk, we're going to nail it, okay? Going forward, we're going to nail it. We're going to be consistent and we're going to deliver a great performance. Uh, our field services, and, and there's a theme here, these are all the touch points to the customer, okay? And with that, uh, you know, that end user experience, the confidence will come back quickly. Okay, the frustration will be gone and the confidence will come back, so we're going to nail that. We're going to deliver some, uh, some new services around self-service and automation to make it easier to do business with us. Okay? And then we're going to really go after the legacy media environment. Okay? and Because uh, it's, it's going to be with us for some time. Unfortunately, and we've been investing heavily in a new environment, we've got to get the, we've got to get the old one working better than it has been. And so, you know, with that holistic approach that we're taking, we're going to be able to really materially improve the end user experience. Okay? Front and centre of everything that we do. And so the stuff that we've talked about, you know, the, the, the end user being at the, at the heart of everything that we, you know, that we do, we've got to start believing that. We've got to make sure that that interaction that we give people, the service that we're giving people is the service that we want to get ourselves. If we would. We were paying for it. So think, think about that. If we were paying for it, the people at the end of the phone, these customers, they pay for our services. We are a services organisation. And so, if we can continue the good work that we've been doing as a group, continuing to collaborate, continuing to stay focused, continuing to live, deliver outstanding service, uh, I mean, we'll, you will get the recognition that you all deserve. And the next time that we do a survey, it will be a completely different result because we look a little bit value. All right? Really important. Now, the, the final piece is uh, we've set up some metrics um, that, are, that are, we're going to use to measure. These are going to become your goals for 2015. You don't have time to go through them all right now. But clear measures that are meaningful to each of you. This is about how you do your job. So we've had higher level metrics in place previously, we wanted to make it more granular this year so that you understand it. All of you need to know what your service levels are. All of you need to know what your job is. All of you need to know what defines success for you in your work. And it's your manager's responsibility to ensure that you understand it. And it's your responsibility to ensure that you understand it. And with that, you can be successful. Okay? That, that can drive your RPR rating, that drives the money that you earn, okay? And it drives your success and it drives to your next job as you move up in our organisation, which is really the land of opportunity. It truly is, okay? So, again, I won't go into the, the full detail of this. These objectives will flow to all of you. They will become your objectives for this year. 50% of how we rate you is off these objectives. We will lay out the objectives that Mark gives the entire organisation on top of that, and that will make it up, okay? But it will be clear what success looks like. And the great news is, with the work that we've done with the 90 day plan, we're able to track now at a granular level that we never could before. Okay, we're a new organisation, it's taken some time for us to get to this level, now we can, and we will never ever uh, go back to where we were before. We will see by week, by month, 
where our performance lapse, uh, lapses <coughs> and we'll address and remediate. If you need help, reach out to your manager. If that doesn't work, reach out to Mike. We're here to help you be successful, all right? If you have ideas for how we can improve the operation, send it up the line, send it to Mike, send it to the capability lead, send it to me. We want to do a better job on a consistent basis. The foundation's been laid now. So there's no excuses for us. 26, uh, 2015 is ours. And we're entering it into it in the best shape that we've ever been in as a group. All right? So please keep up the good work and uh, and the results will speak for themselves. All right? Thanks. I'm heading over to Mark. Perfect. All right. Thanks very much. Yeah, we're running short on time, so if you've got questions, and uh, whether we have answers or not will be in the test, I guess. But uh, why don't we go to the panel of questions? Or, yeah? yeah. Yeah, I'm not doing this alone, guys. It'd be a tough crowd. Look, I can talk. Texas. So, look, every, uh, any question is an open question. Uh, we'll give an open and honest answer. I think uh, uh, we had a few sent to us, so I think we're going to try to tap those. Okay, I'm, I'm sitting here. So, uh, you need them, don't you? She's English. So, so okay. So, we're ready? Yes. And I want you to know, I want you to know I'm wearing my happy socks today. Because I'm happy. Okay, so some questions were sent in in advance, and then I know you're all getting ready to ask the questions from your table that you uh, talked about earlier as well. So there was a question around working from anywhere, and um, there's a couple that actually came in in advance. And people are asking if it's uh, an option here in Vijaya now that the 90 day plan is gone. Um, and what, if anything, are we planning to ensure that people are still engaged if they do come into the office? Um, so there's a really great place to work. Mike, would you like to answer that? Yeah, I'll be happy to uh, answer it. So, yeah, we, we, as you guys know, we suspended the WFA program uh, during the 90-day plan. And what we saw, you know, Mark referred to Mojo, the excitement, the energy that we had during that 90 days. And that collaboration that we saw, I think, showed us that we're better together and that uh, we have an energy and an excitement when we're in the office together. And, and there have been instances where, uh, and I've talked to some folks where, you know, they've said it, it's better because I know if I need help, I can go see somebody. Uh, and when we were doing the WFA, it was much more difficult to work together, that collaboration, uh, which it, it's just, the bottom line is we have energy as a team when we're, we're office, in the office together. And so I, I think at this point in time, uh, I know that uh, we will be best working together in the office. So we aren't going to re-enable uh, the WFA program, uh, but instead focus on our collaboration in the office and working uh, together as teams. So, you have a few other things on the well, well, look, I think, uh, how many of you Raise your hand. We're here when we hit the 300 person mark. And we had that dinner outside the facility. Raise your hand. How many people were here for we hit 300 people and we had a big dinner outside celebrating that, that goal? So uh, if you guys look around, that should tell you something about how much we really know each other. And, and I do think whether it's, you know, we have the same challenge. Uh, with your sister organization in the U.S. that we're so new that uh, we haven't formed the relationships needed to really be an effective organization when we're not around. Okay? And, uh, and, and it's only in the power of all of you together that we become a really powerful organization and the kind of organization that our firm would be proud of. Um, so I think the, uh, and I know the WFA, I'm sensitive to 
uh, you know, re travel and, and reasons why it's difficult to be here sometimes. And uh, you know, I, for those things, have the conversation. But the fact of the matter is, you as a team are exponential than you as individuals apart. And, I, and that's the same characteristic I would, uh, that we've seen with our uh, US-based group. Now, the challenge that we're, with our US-based group is we just don't have enough space anymore there. We have circa 700 FTE uh, people, uh, and we only have about 520 seats, uh, which is going to change soon because we do need space. And uh, unfortunately, we've been running behind. Uh, but, uh, but we're going to solve that because it suffers from the same issue. Because if I ask that question there, most have not been around long enough to, to form those relationships. Relationships and communication are key when you have new organizations that, uh, look, I'm, I'll be honest, we don't have mature processes yet. But that's part of this journey is to develop that and grow. So I would say the challenge is, here, you know, we had the ECN, but you know that mojo and excitement when you walk in the office to be part of something greater than yourself is, is a big deal in life, and uh, you need to keep that going here and have purpose and make it fun. So coming to work is the fun thing of the day, not the, the drag of the day, and only you can do that as a team. So, so that's my comments and embellishment. I, I think the the outcome speaks for itself. And I think, you know, my sense when I walk in the building and the energy speaks just volumes to me of a team that's actually starting to form as a team. And you need to keep it going. Thank you, Mark. And Mike, for your honesty there. Does anybody at any of the tables have any questions around that or any additional questions whilst we get going? Please raise your hand and we'll run with a microphone to you to get to you. Mm. Silence. Oh, excellent, thank you. I think table number 16. We have a microphone coming to you just from the back. Hi, uh, it's Balai from Unix. So I just wanted to ask about, uh, is there any deadline for this uh, OGDC or the legacy and you know, to move it to the new standards, the NGDC? We still have a lot of people still staying in the legacy. Thanks, Mark. Um, so, so, look, I think there's a couple of different dimensions to, to that. Uh, so, what's, what should be driving our, our behaviours now is the architectural standards that are produced by the architecture board. And to that end, um, Vince Tafikula and his group have identified across the board that uh, across the 3,000 applications that we've got, we've got about 1,750 that are use, using what we call aged obsolete uh, technologies. And so the way, we, the way we're looking at it now isn't so much OGDC and NGDC, uh, because the way technology has moved on and the introduction of appliances. So we have appliances that we put in the low density power capacity floor now. And so we're looking at it really more in a high density and a low uh, density uh, configuration. Um, but the answer is, uh, across the board, we're driving the organisation to remediate those legacy products. They're problematic to us and they're difficult for us to support. And I mean, there's a lot of emotion attached, attached with it because of the top 276 applications, more than 150 of those critical applications use aged or obsolete technologies. That is, that is a bad statistic for the firm and it's a difficult statistic for us because it makes it hard for us to manage it. So we spend a lot of time in, in, in New York having these conversations, trying to drive the organisation, and I, I kind of hope that with Phil coming on board and with his very, very strong orientation towards the business and business performance um, and ensuring that the configuration of technology is fit for purpose, that that will help us on our journey to rid of some of that. Uh, we had a number of commitments from business units across the board to remediate uh, their applications and they haven't met those. We've also seen outside of our Win7 program 
a number of applications not get remediated in a timely manner to support the wind seven migration activity. So all of these things are starting to come to a head now. Wind seven, uh, the, the, the new generation Gen 2 VDI environment, 2003-2012 uh, server migration, and simply operational risk. And uh, so I think that's going to become a, a bigger focus area. Uh, across the board and to the fullest extent that we can and I can tell you these are very passionate discussions that Mark and I have with uh, our CIO and our BIO counterparts about getting this stuff done okay and so uh, hopefully more momentum to come I think we've made some good progress but we're about halfway where we need to be all right so um, good question I'm glad you're here Thank you. Um, so, any other questions in the room? Burning questions coming up? Everybody laughed. You know, the, the comment was frictionless. I want us to be frictionless. And, you know, I did likened it uh, to a symbol, and I called, I want to be the duck, right? I want AIG to be the duck. And, you know, a duck glides on the water nice and easy, and on the top it looks really easy, and on the bottom we're pedaling hard. My view is we're the ones pedaling hard underneath while this company just glides. With, with this legacy technology, we are gliding. <laughs> and, uh, and we've got to get rid of it. And that's where, uh, that's where the passion and the conversation is. But it's hard. It's, uh, it's, not only, it's not just about the money, it's about the complexity and the impact to get it done. And, uh, and it's hard. Saying that, I do think there will be renewed commitment to address those. Hi, I'm Kira from Network Engineering. Uh, the challenge today is not just about retaining talented people, but fully engaging them, capturing their minds and heart at each stage of their work life. So how AIG leadership is working towards achieving this? I'll take part of it and then others feel free to chip in as well. Um, couldn't agree more. And um, I think there are a number of things that we have going on and we need to get better at and develop more. I know here in um, KL you have the Sports and Social Committee. Um, we also have the Employee Champion Network. And Fareed, one of our prize winners today, um, heads that up for us here in KL. And the Employee Champion Network is about taking ideas about how we can do things better, networking, connecting people, and creating two-way dialogue between you guys and the leaders here in KL, so Mike and Andy and, and everybody else. Um, so I encourage you to get involved in the ECN and, and connect with Fareed, who's right at the back over there, um, on some of those pieces that we've got going on. It's also about coming in, and we've, we've talked about coming back into the office and being present, um, and it's an opportunity for you to come in and do what, what you want to do. There's the Happy Wednesday lunches, there's team things you can get connected in, you can get together and innovate and think about how we can do it better and um, we're always interested to hear those ideas as well. Um, Mike, do you have anything to add about other things you've got in plan for CyberGyre? Yeah, I, I think, uh, just a thanks for that, Lucy. A, a few other things, and I, I want to mention, you mentioned Happy Wednesdays, and uh, I want to let you guys know we're going to keep going on that. So I, I know we, we sent the message out and said, hey, we're suspending it, but we are going to keep doing that. It's uh, probably going to evolve and, and be a little bit different. It uh, may not always be on Wednesday. So uh, more to follow on that. be some fun stuff there. But yeah, I, I think uh, engagement here, uh, I think we've been OK. Uh, I think a highlight you mentioned the sports and social club, amazing. It's, it's fantastic uh, what that team does and what you guys are able to do with that. But uh, I, I think there's more we can do uh, as a team uh, together. Uh, so I, I look at the engagement side and kind of the fun of what we do. To me, fun is doing a great job, and that's fun when you do great work. So that's part of the fun. I think also doing some things at the office that, uh, that are, are fun in addition to that, uh, as well as outside the office, like the annual party, uh, which I'm really excited about. Uh, by the way, in case I forget to tell you guys, the costumes the, these guys have together are really cool, so we poured it down on Saturday. It's going to be really good. Um, yeah, yeah, no pictures. <laughs> no <laughs> selfies, no nothing, right? Yeah. So, so I, I see uh, that as being a piece of that, but then uh, I think it was Clayton, uh, I can't remember if it's Clayton or Mark, I'm sorry to mention earlier about training. Uh, but, you know, career development, 
uh, what our plans are, where are we heading, where are we heading individually as an organization. Uh, we, we, I, I think it was last town hall uh, we chatted about that very briefly, that you know, main rate of that uh, as an organization and helping you take ownership of your career and where you want to go in your career and us helping you in that. And so I think that's a big part of engagement as well is, is where are we going as an organization. So we're going to put some structure around that this year, which I, I think will really help us uh, all know not only how we're engaged right now, but where am I going? Where are you going? Where are we all going together? Okay. Thanks, Mike. You bet. Um, so we just have five minutes left until we need to close and get on with our dinner, most importantly. Um, there are lots of other questions on this list, including um, the resourcing freeze, and if we're, we're free to start um, lifting that headcount. And I did want to address that, because I know that a lot of people have that on their mind. OK, sure. So I mean, I've put the freeze in place. Um, I've also probably recruited more than 60 or 70 people in the last 90 days. Uh, I've got plans to bring uh, another 30 to 50 SMEs into the organization. And look, the, you know, the, the freeze is off, and, and it, actually it's kind of been off all the way through. Uh, what I've been trying to do is make sure that when we bring resources on board, we've got a plan for them, and we've got metrics around them, and we understand what they're going to be doing, how they're going to be doing it, and what success looks like. Because what I was seeing was that we weren't doing that, okay? And it's, and it's about how we run the operation, how we make your roles fulfilling. So we talk about the, you know, the, the level one ticket activity, we talk about SLAs, we talk about fulfillment, and we haven't been good at doing that. It's, it's a leadership issue, it's not necessarily your issue. But as we sort of close the loop on that now, we've never had a limit on the number of people we can grow this organization to relative to industry best practice and relative, relative to the volumes that we run. And so year on year we continue to grow. And so year on year we continue to add people, but we won't add them in a reckless manner. And so it got that way last year. It was not controlled, and so I stopped it. Uh, and then I continued to work the process behind the scenes, um, and then off the back of the 90-day plan, as I mentioned, I've continued to add people into our operation. And I'll continue to do that, but, but it has to be done with science and it has to be done appropriately and we have to be bringing the right people into the, into the group. So we're at a level of maturity now that we can start to refine the operation. I'm really only looking to bring the best and brightest into the GS organisation. I want every single hire that we make now to be the right hire for us and for it to strengthen our operation. I'm absolutely committed to that. I've got a bunch of SMEs coming in uh, that we're going to hire into the US uh, in, the, in the coming months. I intend to personally interview each of those people. Okay, So we're going to do better. We're going to be more metrics oriented. With the checks and balances we've got coming in place as a result of the 90 day plan and the reporting that and capabilities we've got there, there can be a direct correlation between our growth, volume growth, um, and, our, and our head count. So we should be in good shape. Okay? Yeah, let me, uh, so I get to sit over this and watch sometimes, and uh, look, I, I, there probably were, you know, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, hero type efforts through these 90 days where I heard people working weekends and, you know, working through the night, and that's not a sustainable model, okay? And my expectation is that we need a sustainable model to get sustainable results. and. Uh, you all need to work through that with Mike and figure out what that is and with Clayton and uh, get the right resources the right place. But I will tell you, I'll kind of reiterate, here's a piece of data that maybe you didn't know. The attrition we have here, is, is it high? It isn't low. It's probably about the mile of the market. But what's really kind of scary about it is that within the first year we've lost, of that attrition, most of the people we lose is within the first year, 62%. We lost. Okay, that tells me that the intake valve is coming in so fast. We don't have a good plan to really, and probably some of you who've been here experienced that. Good plan to keep people for the long term, and we're about keeping people for the long term. So if we got to slow down to speed up. We need to slow down and do it right. And that was my message to uh, to these guys. Okay, but we're going to be 
measure it from the market. We've got to be efficient. We've got to find new ways to do things. But we've got to bring people on board and grow efficiently. And when you get really big and you're fighting fires, sometimes the worst thing you do is throw more people at the fire. You might as well just take your licks, line up, and get organized to bring people in effectively. And I think we're, we're at that point. But that metric, I'll be watching. Because if it's like that, that says there's something we're not doing right. Because everyone should want to stay here, uh, especially for people who have just chosen to be here. Okay, okay. thank you, Mark. I'm going to go ahead and uh, we're, we're right at the, our uh, closing time, so I'm going to close this out. Uh, so I, I want to thank our uh, guests uh, for joining us today from the U.S. and, and uh, for our panel and our discussion. Uh, really appreciate them being here. Uh, also, the, the team that put this together today, uh, the ICOPS team, the voice team, it, 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 by the way, it takes a lot of folks to do this. This doesn't just fall together. I mean, it, they put a ton of work to make this work for us. So ICOPS, the voice team, our facilities team, the sports and social club, our first aid team, uh, my assistant Mandy, all of them. Let's give them a big round of applause. And thank you. <laughs> also, specifically, in a one-week period, uh, we've got uh, uh, Fion is coordinating our extended leadership team meeting yesterday, multiple eight by eight session. Today's town hall. She's assisting with the annual party, and then she's got next week's town hall. So everybody, let, let's thank uh, Fion for everything she's doing. Very good. Very good. So thank you. Okay, guys. So uh, if Fionn, if you make your way up here to uh, uh, close us out, I, I just want to close by saying this, and then Fionn, I'll talk about the logistics and, and uh, the prayer room for those that are, are heading that way uh, and the dinner. So the logistics on that. But uh, you know, we we talked last year about how you are the absolute best, but we weren't yet the absolute best, and we're getting there. We're not quite there, but that 90-day plan showed what we can be. You're the absolute best. In 2015, we will be the absolute best. Let's take it on. Thank you. All right, everyone, we're going to do a group photo again. So I just ask all of you to stand, move to the front stage here with the photographer up at the balcony. So if I can just ask you quickly do before the library prayer is ends. So just move up to the stage here.